Gears of War Ultimate Edition. It's a co-op game with a Resi 4 style over the shoulder view, dang beefy shooting mechanics and a cover system that's instantly addictive. I'll be talking here about the game's narrative, the mechanics but not really getting into the multiplayer side of things. So here's the deal. Planet Sierra has seen its fair share of wars but one day from underground the locusts appear, digging up from beneath the surface and well just being general gits all around. There are hints at a bigger story here, but they're only mentioned in passing. I would recommend the Gears of War graphic novels and the books to fill in the gaps on the Pendulum Wars and everything that led up to Emergence Day. We start with Marcus Phoenix being freed from his prison cell. Again, read the novels and the comics, they will get you up to speed. Gears of War is at its core a co-op focused game, played in either split screen or online full screen. One takes control of Marcus and the other takes control of Dom. Now this co-op system works, if only for the cover system that promotes flanking and covering each other's backs. In fact, certain sections of the game rely on that very mechanic, which thankfully the AI will pick up the slack on. You have the usual sprint and dive options, but also the ability to snap to cover, and from here you can shoot around or over the cover to minimise the risk of being hit, but be aware that you can still get flanked. Your loadout typically consists of a handgun, two main guns and grenades. Options for guns are limited, it's just your standard machine gun admitted with a chainsaw on it and sniper rifles, pistols, shotguns, but they've all got different gears names. Even the snub pistol feels beefier than weapons in most other games. Yet moving around from cover to cover is a joy as is the gunplay which is tight, responsive and has one of the best reload mechanics I have yet to see in any other game. Press reload once to start the animation, press it again at just the right moment and you'll perform an active reload which is not only faster but damage buffs the bullets that were reloaded. The trade off, well if you screw it up then you're defenseless for a few seconds while your reload takes longer. The dynamic duo's quest is simply to deliver a light mass bomb to the heart of the locust stronghold. There are other minor plot points along the way, but it's mainly focused on the singular issue of taking down the Locust and the Horde in general. It's when the gears get sidetracked that the story becomes more interesting. Discovering the Stranded's hate for gears, when Dom's given the chance to shine in his own mission and he takes charge for a few chapters, and also hinting but never really committing to the fact that Gears of War could be a scary horror game if it wanted to be. I forgot that about this game, like seriously, there are some very dark and atmospheric scenes in Gears of War, particularly at the start. It could have sent Gears in a very different direction and I would happily play that scary game. I also forgot that there are things like Lambent Wretches in Gears of War, the original one and in the uh, extended remastered one. They wouldn't make a real significant impact on the gameplay until Gears of War 3. So what earns this as the ultimate edition? Well, all the cutscenes have been remade and in certain shots been redubbed as well I believe, there are certain different voice lines. You can view the comics and the concept art if you collect enough tags that were made since the original's release. And also included are a few bonus chapters in Act 5 exclusively for the PC and the Ultimate Edition on consoles. It links Acts 4 and 5 with a, just a small issue of lowering a bridge to proceed and manually taking down a Brumac in the process. And with two people and conventional weaponry, yeah, that's kind of tough. All of this extra content takes between an hour to 90 minutes. It's not all good though. As a remaster, it mostly feels like the faults have been remastered as well. And there are lots of them, but they're very, very minor. They've stayed painfully loyal to the gameplay of the first Gears. Hardly any hostage takedowns or chance to execute a knockdown opponent. In fact, the only gameplay feature that was added that I could see was the TACCOM, where you can actually mark an enemy and I think that was from Gears 3. But the AI is there when it's needed but all too often your teammate will go down in the midst of battle and they've got the aim of a drunken ferret. This, again this is mostly fine but it can cause issues during a boss battle when they get in harm's way and they force you to restart a chapter because they get absolutely obliterated. There are very few enemy types and the reliance on shooting actually feeling good is just about what keeps the game from getting boring after the first few acts. That being said, I did still love Gears and it's as good as I remember. If you're a fan of shooting or just generally feeling like a badass, then Gears of War has you covered. Sure it may feel a little bit samey, but as a game it holds up extraordinarily well. Anyway, 
That's this pocket review wrapped up. Did you go back to Gears? Has the Gears franchise passed you by? Is this one worth checking out for you? And is there anything that you think it needs? Let me know in the comments below or online because you can follow me at Vertical Sprite. All of the social links are in the description below. And until next time, take care, peeps. Ta-da.